Early 1944, the German army is on the retreat everywhere in the aftermath of the Kursk battles and Operation Kutuzov. The front line is shifting west so rapidly, the Germans can only hope the Pontus Stellung will stem the red tide. Army Group North, facing the Leningrad front, has gradually been pushed further away from Leningrad and takes up positions on the west bank of the Narva River. At first, the Pantostellung seems up to the task, and in February, the Germans are able to contain and eliminate a number of Soviet bridgeheads. The situation changes dramatically when the Soviets break through southwest of Narva. A large-scale Soviet attack by the 59th Army into the flank of the German 43rd Corps threatens to cut the supply line and isolate the city of Narva. The attack is roughly aimed to the northwest towards Silamai. The goal is obvious. In this mission, you are in charge of units within the defensive line. The front is strangely quiet here, and the enemy seems passive. Send out a scout squad to find information. Go behind the lines to snatch whatever information or maps you can get, then return to HQ. Use the information you get back to issue orders either to defend or to attack. In any case, you will be in charge and you have no time to waste. Good luck. Well, hello again there friends and fans, Raptor here, and welcome to Call to Arms Gates of Hell Ostfront, the Scorched Earth DLC for it. That in which this mission reminds me heavily of a mission that I thoroughly enjoyed for Men of War Assault Squad, known as the Defense of the Narva Bridgehead. Well, this is essentially the same thing, but made by the actual makers of Call to Arms Gates of Hell, and with more and more content now available with this DLC, we can now see more mods. But this is a part of the DLC, and there are many great offensive missions for the Germans, but also very... Very good defense missions. This one being one of them in Estonia, where our troops are going to first have to go out to try to collect some documents from Soviet troops on the other side of this marsh, and then come on back to learn that, well, basically we're surrounded, there's no hope, and we have to defend to the last man. So let's get started. All right, let's go ahead and grab some troops here. We're going to go ahead and pile everybody into some vehicles. We've got ourselves an amazing armored car, an amazing little uh, half-track AA, the flak there, is going to be very effective against enemy troops and enemy armored cars. We're going to get everybody uh, ready to go here as we played this mission once before during one of our live streams, but I thought it was definitely much more worth completing on my own uh, and trying to build a defense against the uh, last wave of Soviet troops that is basically damn near impossible, unless you know what's coming. So, you know, now that we've got the uh, little bit of hindsight and or foresight of what's to next we're gonna go ahead and prepare to advance across the uh, way there so at the briefing uh, the commander is basically telling us that we need to cross this marshlands and that we've already got some troops over here you can see the little green dots on the minimap there's actually some friendly troops hiding in trees and bushes somewhere around here so even if we were playing with the fog of war on we would at least be able to see uh, where enemy troops might be or tanks or patrols or whatnot Let's go ahead and get started by bringing our troops to the edge of this marsh, which apparently looks impassable, but God, does that look horribly cold. Doesn't that just look brutal? Imagine just sticking one boot in there and just getting some of that muddy, sticky water into your... Uh, no, it's just instant death. Like, death would actually be a, 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 a good thing at that point, how just muddy all these situations are. Wow, little armored car just zipped past a... Uh, a little sandbag there destroying some of it so all these troops that we see on this side we're going to eventually be able to defend with too when the uh, soviets start their attack we'll uh, have a couple of engineering trucks here which we're going to use a little bit but we're going to try to fall back to our second line too and prepare for a defense there so uh the armored cars let's just call them the armored cars the half track and the armored car are going to be very good against enemy troops and also a few vehicles we have snipers with us and uh, some other elite fighters and a medic. So we're going to go ahead and try to cross this marsh as quickly as possible and see if we can try to capture those documents. Now, the documents are kind of towards the northeast side. You can kind of see a few pockets of enemy resistance there. And primarily, it's around a tent where there's an enemy commanding officer. We're going to go ahead and try to deal with him as soon as possible and capture those documents from him. Let's go ahead and bring that half-track up here. This thing's a little stuck. Now, some things I've noticed in this mission is it seems like the uh, uh, later on we'll be given anti-aircraft weapons, uh, anti-aircraft vehicles that will shoot 
at enemy aircraft as they're coming in, and uh, seemingly they just kind of sit around until they're bombarded to hell. So we're going to have to kind of be... Well, we're going to have to play with our Werble winds a little differently. We're going to have to move them around and try to see if we can kind of sneak them in and out of positions and try to be a little uh, aggressive with them rather than defensive with them. But that'll be a little bit later. Looks like we have ourselves a small, <laughs> very small trench line here that was wiped out by one shot by this awesome armored car. Uh, I think this is essentially a Lee gun mounted onto a Puma, and it is a uh, godsend. It is it is god tier weaponry. You will see this weapon a few times in these Scorched Earth campaign missions, and man, it's really great with its heat round. It is able to clobber light vehicles and medium tanks, and even heavy tanks too. That is the type of weapon that could take out a KV-1 if if placed right, and the explosion is grand. I'm gonna go ahead and get these troops then to where the Soviets were just absolutely clapped just seconds ago. Look at those troops there. All those red highlights indicating where enemy troops once were and are now dead, and the 20 millimeter there on the back of the flak half track, the flak track, let's call it, uh, doing some good work too. So uh, we could go ahead and come over here and capture enemy vehicles, and uh, there's like ISU-152s that are occupied. We could try to land a Hail Mary and decrew those tanks, but uh, I guess we're going to just try to keep everything as German as possible if we can today. And of course it takes a little bit of extra time to which we want to see this defense ASAP. So a big defense is coming. This is a massive defense mission, and it will be uh, coming along shortly. The enemy does have some armored cars up here. Let's go ahead and sneak here. There we go. And let's bring our half-track up at an angle. The armored cars essentially are just one... Uh, it's One's got a machine gun. The other one is the uh, turreted variant, if we can find that one. Well, actually, it looks like we have a T-70 here. And it looks like some enemy troops that are in a briefing that are now rushing. They're rushing to find out what we're doing. Oh, nice. 20 millimeter. Oh, wow. A couple shots from the 20 millimeter just devastating that entire group of soldiers. And a heat round being loaded by our armored car. God tier. Yep, one shot. Imagine that, dude. Crazy. Come on, let's finish off that other armored car. So we'll just have our soldiers stand by and not even risk our infantry too much while the vehicles are doing an amazing job at doing their job. AT rifles, all sorts of things we could definitely capture all day long, but no need at the moment. And with a few more shots, we should have that area pretty much clear. So what we're looking for is underneath this canvas uh, covering here, and right there is the uh, Hail Mary of our forces, the creme de la creme. What we're, what we're really after, our objective, is that satchel with all sorts of documentation inside. So we're going to push up with our troops little bit more and we'll probably have a sniper go out and capture that let's see if we can find one uh, actually SMG would be fine too now ah, there we go we'll send this guy up here Hans McHans man let's send him up there ah yes traditional German name and all the sense okay so while these guys are covering us we're gonna jump up there and grab the documents and then bail you don't really have to mess around with this section too much, but I guess if you clear out this side of the bridgehead, it means that the only forces you're going to have to fight, if you do happen to come over here again, will be the enemy tanks that might be disabled on this side or might be um, possibly passing through. Now, the enemy will also bring some artillery. It probably would be a good idea for us to capture that T-70, but... Oh, hello. Nice. Enemy soldier down. The Commissar there. And it looks like our sniper's about to shoot that other soldier, but I guess no need. What is this? An empty barrel. Okay, let's go ahead and have our soldier put that away. Alright, cool. Let's get back to the other side. So again, we could repair the T-70, no problem. We could capture the ISU-152s, no problem. We could eliminate all the enemy troops before we capture those documents, but right now... Uh, commanding officers are here. Big wigs have arrived. They want those documents. They want to know what the Soviets are up to and where they're going. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and get everybody back to the other side then. And we will have control of everyone on our side. Now, given the fact that we know that the... I mean, historically, 
the Soviets are going to come through here like a bulldozer, as they would. Uh, we're going to also try to set up some defenses here, too. So we're going to try to pass everybody back to this side, get all the vehicles back, all the troops back, and see if we can start setting up defenses. So really, our best bet is these uh, armored, or uh, rather these uh, engineering trucks here, which could destroy armored vehicles with their mines, or at least the better sense is to try to track them and use ATs such as the Stug 3 that we'll get later on. So if we happen to place some mines and the enemy uh, has several vehicles that are disabled, they'll have to try to pass those vehicles at an angle, and that, of course, will expose their weak points, which would be perfect for us, exposing that uh, soft underbelly, uh, underbelly or possibly light armor on the sides. It's going to be good news for us. Go ahead and cross that marshland now. Is everybody coming along? Let's go. Right, so in this DLC, there's some other things that you may have seen on the channel before, as well as the defense of Sevastopol and also Pavlov's house. So these are really cool historical missions or missions that I've not seen since either the days of Blitzkrieg back in 2003 for PC. If you remember those days, remember Windows XP? Or possibly uh, the, uh, well, the original Man of War with the defense of Sevastopol II, which is a really interesting mission that you play as the Soviets, a very desperate defense. And uh, a very unique one that I love to play multiple times in the other mode that they have for Men of War called Frontlines, which I wish this would have some more versions of. Okay, we're going to try to really hold this right side. The left side has some good defenses. The right side, as you can see, is kind of blank. As you look at the map, you can kind of see the left side's got a large trench. Actually, almost two of them. And this side does not, so... We're going to try to get everybody dug in before we start the festivities. And we need to buy our troops as much time as possible. So, as this uh, attack is ongoing from the Soviets, eventually they will break through this line and or will be instructed to fall back. And so when we're told to fall back, we will need to bring all of our equipment with us. And so the German soldiers will have to try to stay behind and buy as much time as possible to defend the uh, AT guns that might be retreating and or the Stug and anything else that we get. We'll also have access to quite a bit of Panzer Fausts and maybe a Panzer Shrek or two. So we certainly do have anti-tank capabilities from infantry in an ambush capacity, but we need to essentially remain hidden at all times and wait for them to pass us, which with the AI in this game, they kind of know where you are because it's the AI and they, you know, they kind of cheat. That's just how it is, so if we try to ambush them, they kind of already can detect yeah. us, and so it's kind of hard to get behind them and or wait until they're danger close to attack. But we're going to dig in on this right side with foxholes as much as possible. Anybody who doesn't have entrenching tools can then jump into the trenches on the uh, in the center. Or we can keep a lot of these troops in the rear, and when the enemy is up close to the trenches and maybe kill a few of our troops that are pushed back then we can replenish those and uh, kind of continuously replenish the troops over time in these trenches all right let's go ahead and get a few of our troops in these trenches we could try to i'm going to try to make a spot for one of the medics to lay in actually is there a trench here oh it's a, a rock well we want to leave one of the medics here so i'm going to leave him there we do have a sniper with us as well. One of you guys is the sniper. Here we are. Ulf Huber is our sniper. Can he actually get up in a tree? Nah, probably not a good idea. But he does have the ability to dig in twice. That's interesting. He can dig his uh, self into two different positions. So all of those soldiers have now dug in. That's pretty cool. We'll put him over in the corner. These vehicles back here. Ah, uh, yeah. So that's nice that we get the vehicles at the start. They really make short work of the Soviet defenses, which are really just minimal. Other than that trench and that uh, the couple of armored vehicles that we spotted, there really was nothing for uh, worthwhile to stop us, really. No nothing that was going to stand in our way. Oh, actually, this guy has a uh, AT weapon, so... Oh, we have another... Sniper here. That's interesting.
All right. Couple of soldiers with AT, couple of MGs here. Would be great if we had some sort of a tower, but that's obviously going to be the first target for any attacking army. Just go ahead and get these guys in the trench. Okay, and we do need to find whoever uh, was our soldier that had the satchel on him. Keep our medic back. Okay, Ulf can go back up into the trench that he had dug. Medic can stand by. And we just need to find who has our satchel now. See if we can bring him back. What is uh, this guy up to? He's a lieutenant. Otherwise useless, as he can't really do much else. And stand around and bark orders. Now we got to play a little scavenger hunt. Find out which one of the Germans has our... I don't think we sent in a medic, so it's got to be one of these guys. With the MP40s. Got to be this guy then. Nope. Uh... We didn't leave anybody behind, so... Could be one of these guys here in the trench. Get you over there, sir. Take a little extra time to get all these guys set up. Okay. One of our troops here is not indicated. Oh, M MP... Uh, or MG42 there, nice. Ah, it's this guy here. Okay. So now we can bring our guy back to this. He's got the satchel right here. Confidential documents. Two KGs. That's <laughs> quite a bit of docs. And let the fun begin. So now we uh, could start building defenses with these two trucks here. But we're just going to rely on uh, mostly our, our tanks and our artillery. We have uh, Jagdpanzer, uh, Jagdpanzer 38 here, the Hetzer. We have a Stug 3 and a couple of our other vehicles here, which I think we're going to try to keep mostly on the on the right side. It's a little light, but it's a good position to attack in, too, because the enemy tanks will come right through the marsh. And uh, if we can block them, it's just going to be hell for them to uh, pass through some of those areas. It's going to be rather challenging for them to push through. All right, let's get the vehicles back. All right, so these guys are dipping out. Boy, what could have been in those documents? They seem to be leaving awfully quickly, don't they? All an ass right out of here. All right. Looks like we caught them preparing an armored assault. Yes, indeed. Another cool thing is if Fog of War was on, our uh, troops over here kind of stay hanging out on this side so we can actually see the enemy troops as they approach. Yeah. All right, so we've got quite a few AT mines available. We've got some uh, pickaxes, too. Now, our goal is going to have to ev eventually retreat with those forces. And there we go, the British have arrived. Now they're just the Lend-Lease. Uh, I think the uh, enemies will come with like a... I believe they come with Shermans and Churchills and maybe maybe Cromwells. We'll see. But anyway, now we got to defend for 20 minutes. So let's begin. The game truly begins now. Let's go ahead and get ready for all the fun. All right. So we're going to mine the road. We're preparing our second line of defense already. The first line is already basically done. There's nothing else we can do here. And we need these forces to retreat ASAP. So things like the uh, AT guns that are still remaining. We'll try to get out of here with a truck of some sort whenever we can. So any sort of supply truck that we can grab and go with, that's what we're going to have to do. 
And a lot of these vehicles are just dead. Out of fuel. No hope. All right, Churchill going left. So in our defense, we have pack 40s We have uh, AT, uh, well, Flak 88s, big AT, like actually something that could do something. And we have some Panzer Shreks here too. That's good. Get this guy out of here. We'll switch around. And so now we chill out for a while. Literally. Wow, did he place all those mines already? Nicely done. Back to place more. So another great thing about this game is, of course, we can pick up these boxes and move them. Ammo boxes can be moved up to where they're needed. Luckily, our troops have pretty good supply for the time being. Wow, nice direct hit. Second direct hit. I believe that tank is now tracked. He's in an unfortunate spot for us, but... And now the fun begins. So we don't get really any sort of reinforcements. I don't think any vehicles will even show up. We just got to make do with what we got. I don't want to mine too much in this area. But we will at least try to uh, prepare mines where the enemy might eventually approach. You can see there's an anti-tank ditch back here. So if and when the enemy breaks through the uh, second line, or the first line, when they're going to attack the second line, they're going to have to go through... Um, basically this main road here, so let's continue to mine that. Already thinking ahead and preparing our second line of defense. Alright, nice. Alright, another enemy tank here. Hey, a KV-1. Those Flak 88s, I believe, are on both sides hitting them. Yeah, here's another one here. Taking some shots. And a Pack 42 with lots of supply. Now, one of the annoying things of this mission is that the enemy will send out IL-2s that will eventually drop bombs on top of our vehicles. And sometimes they'll indicate one vehicle as being like... A vehicle that's going to be targeted and you'll move that vehicle and it'll just kind of show up somewhere else so it'll tell you like hey this stook's about to be attacked move your stook and then it'll attack something completely different so a little annoying is that alive not anymore wow it's a nice hit wow look at that roadblock already Black 88 doing a good job of firing. Look at those crews, man. The animation on those crews to load. Very nice. This guy's done again? Jeez. Looks like these vehicles cannot be moved. My plans may change again. But essentially, we're setting up these uh, AT mines, preparing for the second line of defense. Churchill Mark Threes are arriving. Those are quick-firing six-pounders that can do some pretty good damage, but not much if they're too far away. Essentially, they're a rolling bunker once they get disabled, which typically happens where they take a hit on one of the tracks and sit there and are able to fire at you for a very long time. And are a nightmare if they get near one of your trenches. Let's continue to mine the right flank. Let's see here. Uh, more light tanks approaching. 
And those uh, Churchills going off to the flanks, those ones scare me just because they take so many hits and s are so distracting against so many other targets that could approach infantry-wise. Luckily, we got plenty of machine guns. Mortars are in tow. Go ahead and get another guy. Preparing these uh, trucks for move. Oh, okay, these can actually move. All right. Now, there's other things that we can build, too, defensive-wise. We can build uh, hedgehogs and barbed wire. But I'm not sure how we can do that without an engineer. Thirteen minutes remaining. Back up the Stug just a little bit. Now it looks like we mostly have anti-tank, uh, or rather a pickaxe, so we could build maybe a tank ditch of some sort. They might have new defenses in this one, similar to what was available in the Finnish DLC. Okay. Let's switch these two around. Oh, he's got 11. There we go. So the enemy in the second half will probably attack with some heavier tanks. We will see IS-2s, and those are incredibly difficult to destroy. Uh, especially point blank with like a Panzer Shrek in the side. It's just, it, it refuses to die. And that's a problem with some of those heavier armored uh, vehicles. Oh, now we're getting artillery on our position. So the enemy is bringing an AT gun on the left and right flanks. Let's go ahead and try to get our armored car up there to zap that. They are going to hammer our flanks with artillery. Now let's load... HE rounds, which it's not going to do. Okay. Now it will. Nice. Beautiful. Enemy vehicles spawning behind us. All right, that 20 millimeter chewing them up. They're spawning right there. they're okay wait this is uh, mr. mr. classified docs again all right let's place some mines on this road here It looks like the uh, armored car did a fantastic job. There is the chance of capturing that KV-1, but it is very unlikely that we'll be able to repair it and get it back to our lines before it's overwhelmed by enemy infantry. It's possible. We could do it. But with our limited infantry, we're going to try to keep things the way they are.
All right, let's get our infantry ready to pick up these AT guns. What is this here? Oh, an M3 Len Lease destroyed. The enemy will get Shermans in this DLC. They will get, uh, obviously, Churchills and the Stewards, too. Cool to see it. Uh-oh. The Stug finally hit. Looks like they're bringing over a heavy tank again on the right flank. Enemy aircraft are trying to spot one of your tanks in the fog. Prepare for incoming airstrike, right? So they will indicate which tank it is right here. So we'll try to move now. Wow. Wow. So you got to completely move those vehicles, 100%. Seems a little too accurate, a little too ambitious. But they tried. Alright, what guns are we going to take with us? Pack 40 here. And maybe the Pack 40 here. And then the mortars as well. We got six minutes to lock down. And now is when the uh, battle truly begins. Getting these troops out of the vehicles so that way the enemy doesn't shoot at them since they're not occupied. Looks like we're out of ammo in a few spots. Stug is back in the fight. Get these guys off the mortar. Get in the tank. Nice, cool looking pack gun here. Really looking nice. Artillery trying to fire here. Absolute mess over there on that left side. Alright, we'll only be able to salvage so many guns. Get these mortars out of here. We're preparing early. We're falling back to the second lines for things that just aren't going to see the enemy yet.
Duke for the second time hit. It's down, but it's not out. Hetzer scoring some kills here. Excellent work. here another mortar yep yeah. all right let's get our medic there we got somebody to heal up where's our medic Wow, I can't believe the Stug has been hit twice. Still in the fight. Still ready to go. Well, when it's repaired. Alright, another big wave pushing through. Biggest threat here is any sort of Churchill that we see. SU-152s will also be a big problem later on. What do we got for ammo here? Oh. Looks like we're out of HE rounds for this guy. Go ahead and back in. Alright, Stug is up again. Get in there, boys. Alright, loading with... AP rounds again. And the Stug low on ammo too. We're going to pull him back early as well. We've only got about a minute left. Couple of wounded here. Man, I wish the medics would automatically do their job. Okay. Well, the Soviets got about a minute left to break through our line. They've started to hit the guns. But not too much major damage. Unfortunately, the Flak 88s are going to have to hold position. I don't think we can move these. So, while we're ordered to retreat, we'll try to leave some troops behind and also AT guns. And that's just a sacrifice I'm willing to make. Let's get ready to get out of here. Pull some of our defenses back. Our forces from the Großdeutschland Division have deployed a second line of defense. So now we've got Tiger tanks and a couple of other 88 guns. I think those are Pack 43s. Now it's time to get out of there. Let's 
pull back what we can. Get resupplied. Pull back whatever AT we can find. Oh, unfortunately, hitting one of our trucks here. So we're not going to be able to fall back with everything, but... Now what's very annoying, though, in this section is that the enemy is able to... Uh, hit our anti-aircraft guns with aircraft. They're able to hit us almost better than we are able to hit them with anti-aircraft fire in aircraft, so... Just imagine that. Alright, so what's our current objective? Defend? Okay. Actually, I don't think this countdown timer will begin until we fully evacuate from this area, so this does give us time to try to uh, bring back all the guns we can. ADAs will have to stay put, but... There's a little bit of a uh, chill now. see if we can get some more anti-tank mines placed. So yeah, luckily we have an anti-tank ditch here on the left. So we're going to want to put a lot of mines here on this other side and replenish whatever we've got. So let's start getting settled in. Okay, we're going to need way more ammunition. Hatzer can secure the far right side. Go ahead and drop off this AT gun. Nice little pack 40 there. Uh, what? What just happened to our Hetzer? Did you see that? It just disappeared completely. Okay, that's got to be repaired. <laughs> or patched, I suppose. That's interesting. We have our Stug, but the enemy somehow stolen our Hetzer. Great. Enemy's cheating. this damn thing out of the way. Wasting time. There we go. Get some more ammo for the Stug. And we'll try to take some side shots on the enemy. Wow, look at that tiger hauling ass. Very nice. Okay, we'll bring multiple AT guns to the right side. Fall back with a few more guns. So far, so good. Yeah. 
Now they're wounding a lot of soldiers here. All right, well, now the timer's begun, so... Let's go ahead and try to leave some of the troops there. Wow, what an absolute mess of defense here. Alright, well, I hope the Stug has been fully replenished. Here comes the Big O attack, and now they're pissed. Like, they're really mad now. Like, no fooling. They mad. Okay. Now, one round will probably kill all these soldiers, but... We don't want that to happen. <laughs> well, we're running out of places for everybody to hide. Alright, so the ISU-152s are going to be a big problem. Same with the uh, IS-2s. So, those are two tanks that we need to kill pretty much 100% of the time on the first shot. And that's not going to happen all the time, as you can imagine. Alright, so this will buy us some time. Especially the defense on the right side. It's pretty robust and thick. With at least a little bit of layering and some vehicles that will cause some harm to the enemy. But it won't be long until an ISU destroys those Flak 88s, unfortunately. Alright, let's get some mines down. Let's see. We we'll want nothing coming down that main road. And we want nothing flanking us on the right. Wow. And there goes the delete button. The rolling delete button. The ISU-152 devastating the trench line. Crazy amount of destruction. You don't really have to be accurate when you have a tactical nuke before, <laughs> before tactical nukes. Let's fall back with some troops. Oh, we'll be in good shape if we get down to like 10 minutes before the enemy breaks through here. That's not going to happen, but... Oh, enemy aircraft. It's sleeping. Okay, let's see. Let's get some more AT up. Maybe we'll swing to the left side with the... AT guns here. Twenty minutes to go. All right, boys, let's dig in again.
Wo soll das Ding hin? Right, how are our mine layers doing? All done? Man, they're fast. Let's bring an AT gun here for flanking. Takes a long time to reload that ISU, but the longer we can keep them firing in one spot, the better. Oh. Rip to the uh, 20 millimeter. Come back and be crew to the Stoog. Become one with the Stooge. Molded by it. All right, 18 minutes left. Not bad. We might have a chance. They're cutting through the line pretty good on the left. ISU is probably going to hit the uh, 88 next. All right, let's prepare some more defenses. So, at least digging these defenses allows us to angle to whichever direction we have to with some level of defense. Looks like they're getting ready to breach in the middle. Waiting for one large hit from the ISU. I can hear the shots coming in. Ah, oh, Sniper doing some good work. Surprisingly, the 88 is still alive after a big hit. And another one. What's firing at us? We got to be able to shoot back. It looks like a... Uh Oh, it's a KV or a IS one. Let's go get whoever we can on that gun. All right, boys, get back on that gun. Oh, are we completely out of ammo? Damn. All right, we can abandon it. We have no ammo. All right, comes down to the defenders on the left flank then. Or the uh, left side of the right side defense. You're out of ammo, sir. You can come on back. Oh, enemy aircraft trying to hit something again. Drive down the road.
What are you doing? Just get get down the road, bro. We'll pick you up in a minute. So we do have tanks capable of anti-aircraft fire nearby. Fine, only the Stug, unfortunately. Alright. Yeah, like I mentioned, there's like no way to shoot those down, unfortunately. So yeah, for that mechanic in the game, or at least in this mission, the really only thing you can do is try to run. And if you run in separate directions, it's not really sure which one you're going to track. So it's, it's kind of a good idea to have everybody run in a direction and try to be together in a group. However, that Tiger tank commander tried to bail out. I don't know what he was doing. The Stug was not going to last long, though, to be honest. I I wish I could say different, but that thing was not going to last much longer. Going to come down to those Tiger tanks. Well, we're looking at about 13 minutes, and the enemy is not really... Um, Come close to even attempting to attack this uh, this side at all. Essentially, what we're buying here is time, as they now have to flank south. A real big threat here, though, being aircraft again. If they uh, attack us, it's probably going to be a tiger, and it's probably going to be on the right flank. And our only hope is going to have to try to be to drive backwards to the uh, west side. And we could turn our tail to the enemy, which is not good in any sense. Ugh. It's not going to be good. Don't like it. Okay, a little bit of engagement on the northern side. Enemy has got about 11 minutes left. Get our medic back here. Now, some of our troops still had anti-tank weapons on them, so there's a possibility they did destroy a tank or two. We're really just buying us time. Now, the other thing is these... Uh, man, these Whirlwinds. Again, if we face a situation like we just did with the Stug and the Tiger, running is going to be the better option because the uh, Whirlwinds are just kind of going to get hit. In fact, we should have two. Where's the other? Well, the funds with the guns are starting to... Oh, and uh, looks like it might be snowing a little bit more. Ah, beautiful. The 8.8 .8 is firing off here. Yeah, unfortunately, if we place our Whirlwind over here, I don't think it's going to be able to shoot down the aircraft when it goes to attack the Tiger tanks. Oh, lots of enemy infantry over here. No more... 
Well, there's a few tanks, but not as much as it was. All right, the enemy has finished their assault on the right flank and is now pushing again. This will be interesting. Back it up. Enemy tanks are going to that far right side. That is an awful lot of tanks coming on that right side. I think they're hitting mines. broken on the tiger yeah these are not going to be weapons to save us they're cool and all but not not here the stug would have been one and done by like an is1 or two and one of our Stugs was, one of our Tigers is down, as we thought. Get back on that gun. Okay, Tiger's repaired somewhat. All right, multiple AT guns are firing. We got six minutes to go. Big boy. Yeah. Alright, vehicle passing in front. Good kill on the IS-2 here. Disabled of the engine there. Alright, uh, oh. SU right there. And they've only got like seven more coming. Alright, luckily that minefield saved us a little bit. Three enemy tanks there. Either not pushing forward on purpose, but more than likely disabled because they're tracked. Wow, crew on fire bailing out of the ISU. Wow, 
Wow, tank alive. Let's just stay back and wait for them to come to us. All right, we're in for the final fight. Let's make sure we've got ammunition. This is it. This is it. Enemy aircraft now? Wait, what the hell? Where did our frickin' tiger go? It's just gone. What the hell? Our tiger has disappeared and so did our uh, head, sir. Where the hell did the tiger go? It's not even destroyed. There is no carcass, no, no sign of the tiger at all. It just disappeared. Enemy aircraft coming in. I want to see if this will even attempt to try to shoot at him. No real attempt was made. Wow. Alright, so I have no idea where the tiger went, have no idea where the Hetzer went. I have a feeling then the Stug would have just auto-deleted. Like, I don't understand why <laughs> vehicles are auto-deleting. Well, the Tiger could have at least taken out the uh, IS-2 that passed in front of it since it was passing on the side and possibly one of these ISUs as well since they're being rather asinine with it. I don't mind taking losses to uh, enemy activity, but when it's... Uh, just vehicle deletes. It's no bueno. All right, the 3kg charge got one of them. Well, we're down to less than a minute. Enemy is still taking tank losses. AT guns are still firing off. <laughs> They've got the IS-2 covering the uh, 152.
but I think we did it. Ah, damn. Well, we ran out of time on that one, but I'm going to have to go ahead and give that one an actual GG. That's that's a win, baby. Time ran out, and uh, friendly tanks just deleting. The Hetzer being visible on screen and then disappearing. Same with the Tiger. Mission will have to have a little bit of a workout, I think, for the first update on that one. But that's some feedback we can give. But uh, Timer ran out to zero. That is a successful defense. There's not much more we could do against uh, a Permiad, a Parade of Communism. I'm not salty. It's fine. <laughs> All right, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you very much for watching. Take care, and we'll see you soon. Rawr, rawr, rawr. I'm mad.